It's a way to control basic exposure on a, on a camera, so taking the camera off auto mode and into manual, which is something that I always wanted to do as a beginner but was confused about, controlling iris or aperture, shutter speed and, and ISO. This is a Cinedy Gear News video, supported by B&H and CVP. Hi guys, I'm Johnny from Cinedy and I'm here with Tim from... Expodo Limited in Oxford, England. I never heard of this company and I guess you guys never heard of this company. But Tim is a very passionate person and he's very determined to try and change the way that we actually control cameras. Are you a photographer? Are you a professional person? Are you from the filming industry? Or what, is your, what are you by, by trade? I trained as a mechanical engineer and I've been working on climate change policy and then renewable energy. And um, I guess it was about the time my, my son was born. I, I've always liked taking photos, but I wanted to actually understand my camera. And so it started as a hobby and I just wanted to understand for myself. Um, my first thought was once I'd kind of got this thing working, um, on paper, I thought, well, if I can send it to the camera companies, maybe they'll, maybe they'll use it, maybe they'll send me a free camera. And, uh, <laughs> and I, I worked on it a bit longer, and we've ended up um, filing and having a patent granted, and it's become a, a little startup. And so now I'm here to really meet the camera companies and show them our, our prototype and our demonstrations and see if there's one of them who would like to pick it up and run with it, take a, take a bit of a risk, but uh, see if there's a way that it could help more people um, understand how to unlock the power of a powerful camera and I kind of I'll ask it later but I'm curious to know if some of the features of what we've got could actually be useful for professional filmmakers uh, which I'm I'm not so like most of the times the best inventions are coming from a certain need and as you said you wanted actually to move the camera from automatic to manual and have control yes. and then obviously it was a little bit confusing yeah. or intimidating yes. because this is not always self-explanatory like how to yeah. how to get <laughs> a blurred background for example exactly so what you did you moved away from the buttons mm -hmm. thought about how to do this a much more intuitive way yes and created something which is very colorful and very easy to use on the camera lcd screen itself that's the idea yeah, that, that's it. I mean, we've got, um, it, it could be a firmware update for, for cameras. Um, there are ways that it could actually become a, a, a physical dial on the camera, uh, which would be wonderful. Um, it's, it started as sketches, then I made a, an Excel, sort of pushing the edges of Excel to make a simulation um, with, with pictures inside it. And then uh, really I wanted to kind of use it. The, the, the next step was with a... A, um, a Fujifilm X-T1 and I uh, made some little stickers and put them on the um, <laughs> on the shutter speed dial and on the ISO dial and on the uh, on, on the aperture ring so then I had my own numbering system to try and make sense of it um, so I had my first Expodo camera was the <laughs> Fuji X X-T1 um, but really I wanted it to be properly integrated and so then I started looking I, I can't program um, but I was looking for a, a way to get it into a camera. So I started looking at, can you just like write an app for a camera? And it turns out, mm, not so much, because uh, cameras are sort of... Um, they it's like a black box a bit. Yeah, it's not like they all use Windows. Um, they all have their own operating systems. Um, but there are little communities of hackers out there uh, um, working on Canon cameras and Sony cameras in particular. And so I, I, I got in touch with uh, that community and uh, found someone, Martin, who's just this genius uh, programmer in Germany. And so um, we worked together to put put some uh, our UI into into a few Sony cameras. So we've done it on this Sony A7 Mark II, um, and we've done it on the touch screen of a an A5100 and on a little RX100. Uh, <laughs> so what we have here is uh, literally a hacked camera. Yeah. With your uh, user interface, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> but you have your user interface to help with uh, exposure and, and such yeah. on this camera. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So you've been working on this idea for quite some time. Yeah, a long time. It, a long time. <laughs> it's never easy to reach to any of the companies, obviously. No. And I can feel you because I know in general that when you believe that you have a good idea and you're trying to reach out, 
sometimes the main obstacle is to explain. So let's presume mm. the camera manufacturers are watching now, okay. <laughs> some of the big guys. <laughs> And I'll give you 60 seconds after this lady will finish to, to roll. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll give you 60 seconds to explain in a very short and accurate way what is the idea and why is it so important to implement it in a camera. Ready? Okay, let's, let's go. Let's try this. Okay. The idea is to take the essential elements of any exposure and to visualize them. So I would say to a beginner photographer that every photograph ever taken was made with one ingredient, light. And then a camera's job is to record it in three steps. The light comes in through an aperture, that's step one, uh, for an amount of time, that's step two, and it's recorded on an image sensor, and that's step three. Now, all four of those variables, light, aperture size, time, and sensitivity, all add up to the brightness of the image that you have. Not the brightness of the scene, the brightness of the image that you're recording. And what we've done is we've taken all four of those and we've drawn a line. The length of each line is proportionate to those values. And we could have done it as a straight line, but we've wrapped it around a circle so that when it gets back to the top, that represents a normal exposure. So in photography land, that would be EV0. Um, and it then means that as a as a photographer or a videographer, your job is two steps. Step one is to set the brightness of your image. And having done that, um, you can then play with the, step two is to play with the trade-off between these variables. And again, for a, a new videographer, a new photographer, I would say that those three steps on the camera all have the side effect of making your picture blurry. You get background blur, bokeh, you get motion blur, and you get grain blur or image noise. So why was that important? I think because cameras are so powerful now, but really to get the incredible pictures that we see in this exhibition, you need to know what's going on. You need to be able to take it off auto mode, even if, even if you don't, and help more people to, to do that. Thank you, Tim. But guys, is this is something that you would like to see in your camera, a very easy to use user interface that can control your aperture ISO and shutter speed. Shutter speed. Good. Tim, thank you very much for thank your you time. Are. And guys, thank you very much for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.